Okay, we are leaving Carver's Gap. Here, there's where the AT crosses the road. We're leaving Carver's Gap and we're going southbound today back to Hughes Gap where we left off before. And the reason we're going southbound is because we just have a little bit of a elevation, a little bit of a climb this morning and then the rest of it's downhill. It's only six and a half miles and um, we've got an appointment to get some work done on the truck. We had a little issue the other day, so we're doing that. I gotta go back and get my. Oh, your poles. <laughs> They're back at the Spera. restaurant. I'm thinking. I, th I think it cuts through over here. Right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sparrow left her poles at the. There was a little restroom there. <laughs> and she's going back to get them. Well, I think there's a cut through over to there from here. We're hoping. But anyway, yeah, six and a half miles today. We got to take the truck in this afternoon to a little shop in Irwin. Not anything serious or anything. We just um, check engine light came on, and we it was the O2 sensor. Not to get into details, so it's not anything major. But anyway, we um, not sure what we're going to do the rest of the week. It's we're kind of up in the air about that. It's supposed to rain this week. We don't want to go over Roan Highlands in the rain because we want to be able to see the views. So we may jump up and do some miles up ahead of us. And, um, but we'll see. We'll, we're, we're just playing that by ear. All right, we will see you down the trail. really pretty in here as we're starting up all the little trees up under the big canopy of evergreens um, I do want to say something very exciting that happened is I have new shoes <laughs> my other ones had over 500 miles on them so yesterday on our zero day, we went into Johnson City and I got some new shoes. So very happy. I was feeling every root and rock, all the cushion had worn out of them and I was feeling it. Plus the tread was gone, I was slipping around. So I'll have these for another 500 or so. And just so you know, if anybody's interested, I'm wearing Ultra Olympus 5 trail runners. But um, yeah, so happy day with new shoes. So, it's beautiful out here. Here comes Sparrow trip. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> All right, we made it up to the point one blue blaze for the high uh Roan Mountain High Knob Shelter. Or Roan High Knob Shelter one. But either way, this is the blue blaze that leads up to it. The AT continues that way southbound we're going to probably walk up there because this is the highest uh, shelter on the AT at some uh, something over 6,000 so anyway it's a little foggy we're just now getting into the fog at this height at this elevation so uh, it's been clear smuggy today but cool not cold though it's a uh, short sleeve shirt in a minute when I get up here so we're heading up the up this blue blaze is uphill to the Rhone Mountain of the Rhone High Knob Shelter. All right, 
we just made it up to the rain high mountain shelter so this is what it looks like as we approach it from the rear it's a log structure pretty cool place got a, some places to sit in a fire ring here yeah it's completely closed in so it's kind of windproof and here's what it looks like inside I just got a thermometer of course, I can't read it. Looks like it's about maybe around 55, 60 degrees. Here's an arrow pointing to the water source over that way. Let's have a door. What I said, I thought chestnut knob was only on the door. We were wrong about that. We were wrong. So I don't know what this is up here. I guess there used to be a tower here, and that was the cabin for the guy. That's yeah. what that is. Because exactly there used to be a fire tower. There was a fire tower here. You can see the. Uh... So yeah, it looks like here's the. Here once was a, a fire tower, and that was probably um, where the guy could get down or from up there and have some shelter and probably slept there maybe sometimes but anyways beautiful up here it's just really beautiful you can see the trees are a little bit younger where the tower was then the surrounding trees are much older and gnarlier so anyway i'll tell you what the elevation is here in a minute back down and hopped on the AT from the shelter. The shelter was at 6,200 and some odd feet, 6,270. And uh, so we, we're back on the AT. There's the white blaze. <clears throat> Heading south. The next highlight we'll come to is the Cloudland Hotel site, which is just a foundation area. There used to be a resort up here in the elevation for people to come and be cooler for air conditioning and i guess we're walking on one of the old uh roads that led up here to it because this is definitely a old road bed that we're walking on and it's a rocky one but i guess maybe back then these rocks weren't exposed because this would be a rough rough road to drive on if it was like this But uh, we're on our way about a half a mile away from there, so we'll show it to you when we get there. of the Cloudland Hotel. It was built in 1884. It was a three-story resort up here. People came up here because of their hay fever and just to relax and, and also get, away from um, summer heat. get away from summer heat. Uh, it says the North Carolina Tennessee border ran through the middle of the hotel and they had a line painted down the banquet hall. And another cool fact, they um, it was Alcohol was legal in Tennessee and illegal in North Carolina. So there were parts of the hotel where you could have alcohol and other parts you couldn't. So 
It's crazy. It looks like down there there's some foundation still left down there. But yeah, it said it was two dollars a day to stay here. Ten dollars a week, thirty dollars a month to stay in this. Three meals a day. Three meals a day were included with that and a room. So pretty cool times for folks to escape the heat and come up here in the summertime. So it's beautiful up here, that's for sure. down some since we've been descending after the Cloudland Hotel site. Beautiful trail here. It's a lot like the Smokies section. Up in this spruce fir and green moss growing on the trees, rocks. It's very similar to the Smoky. So we're uh, carefully making our way down. It's a little wet. Not too slippery though. I don't think it rained much up here, but it rained a little. Everything's wet. And so far today it's been, we're kind of up in some clouds, but they seem to be burning off a little bit now. Switch back. How's the weather up there? It's turning out to be nice. Good. All right, beautiful walk this morning. So, wanted to show you a little bit of what it's looking like. tell if it's still got live branches on it or is it dead but anyway it looks like two trees intertwine here it's pretty good nature's art lots of yellow birch in here mixed in now that we've dropped down a little bit in elevation so it's kind of interesting how that starts to take place. You mix in a little bit of hardwood <clears throat> with the uh, spruce fir forest as you come down. Still predominantly spruce fir though. We're probably around 5,600 feet. So we were at 6,200 feet up there at the high knob shelter. So. We're descending into Hughes Gap. I don't know if we have any more climbs or if we go all, down all the way to Hughes. It may be that we're just descending to Hughes Gap where we left my vehicle this morning. So anyway, 
Beautiful hike. Right, we got about three miles left. We've dropped down about 5,300 feet. So we're all about 900 feet from where we were at Roan High Knob Shelter. And now, as you can see, very few of the spruce firs and many more of the hardwood mix, maples and birches, hickories and oaks and all that. So also look at all this green uh, growth on the ground, the grasses and stuff, totally different than it would was up there at that higher elevation. In a little flat spot here on the trail. I'll try to zoom out just a little bit and give you a little wider view. But uh, there's a campsite right there. It's nice and flat right through here. We've been descending once we left the Cloudland Hotel site, we've been on a descent. So we've dropped off down to, like I say, 5,300 feet. Still have some spruce fir mixed in, but it's not the predominant tree anymore. So kind of interesting to watch it change as you drop down in elevation. All right, well, I just thought I'd show you that and we'll keep moving. Talk to you later. Still two, um, about uh, 0.4 miles away. So we should be down there around two o'clock. I do have an appointment to get a little service work done on my truck. I had a check engine light come on. Turns out it was an O2 sensor that needs to be replaced. So um, actually the check engine light came on and I got the code red and that's what it was. And, it's been a couple of days ago that I had diagnosed, but this yesterday, actually, our zero day, the light didn't come on. So um, now that the light's cleared, but I'm still gonna take it by, get them to check it out and maybe replace that part if they can get it out. It's, those oxygen sensors are 
screwed into the exhaust system near the catalytic converter and they are notoriously hard to get out. Even a mechanic has a hard time with it. So we'll see how it goes. But I've been hustling it up a little bit down this hill to get down here. A sparrow and trickler are behind me. It's been a downhill all the way kind of day, except for the beginning when we climbed up from Carver's Gap, up a pretty easy climb up to Roan High Knob. So, anyway, the rest of this has just been a downhill that's gotten smoother as I go down. So the actual trail is actually smooth now. So we can, I can really make some time on this on a downhill. It's not real steep. So, a few minutes, I'll be back at Hughes Gap where my truck's parked. And uh, we'll check in then. This is what the trail's been looking like in the woods here beautiful lush green sun's been peeking out today i mean it's a little overcast but it's been kind of sunny of course down in the canopy the green tunnel here on the at it's uh nice and shady a little breeze blowing it's probably in the low 70s feels great all right talk to you guys later All right, sitting right at two o'clock, uh, about three minutes till. There's the truck down there at the gap. So I'm just coming in to the gap. And uh, we'll be able to put this 6.5 miles in the books. Short day today, we needed to uh, get the truck looked out. So we picked a short day to make that appointment. So I've got about an hour to get there. Uh, hopefully I can get there in time. So either way, it'll be okay. But we're almost back down to Hughes Gap from Carver Gap today. So short day, easy day, very easy day. Um, most of that was downhill. The uphill was pretty easy that we did early in the morning, earlier in the morning, and then the downhill has been fairly easy too. So no complaints about the hiking today at all. The weather's perfect. Um, but uh, let's see, we should be at, uh, let see what mile, somewhere in the 382 range, I think from the, northbound mile 382 from uh, Springer. So we've got about 85 miles or so to go to get to um, Damascus, couldn't think of it. <laughs> but uh, we've got to get about 80 or 85 or so to get to Damascus now. So we're narrowing it down quickly here at the end. So, made it back down to Hughes Gap. There's the vehicle sitting there by itself. So, we're good to be back. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later. All right, just got through, made it down to the shop where I was family auto care here in Irwin. And uh, they've got me fixed up, got me a new o oxygen sensor put on, so my problem should be resolved. Let's hope. I didn't really, have, it doesn't really cause any problem. It might cause a little bit of fuel uh, mileage issues, but the truck was running fine. But uh, anyway, got that done, and these guys are great. Did a good job, and easy to work with. So I recommend Family Auto Care. Talk to you guys later.